So you may be wondering, how did Ethan get a farm or, or why does he have a farm? And, and, and the truth is, I've been farming my whole life. I started out farming about 25 square feet. It was all straight rows of the wooden floor in my bedroom in town where I grew up with my mom. And I've wanted to farm ever since then, but, but early on, I, I realized that that really wasn't possible. I saw the writing on the wall and that the kid who grew up in town didn't have a lot of opportunities to farm most likely. So I went different directions. I looked at different things. I had different dreams. I was going to be in a rock band didn't work out then i was going to be a professional bass fisherman you know maybe that's still in the cards i'm not sure yet but i had really given up on the idea of being a farmer i would say by the time i was maybe 12 that dream of the farmer of being a farmer had really kind of just faded away i didn't play with the toy tractors as much on the floor i used to go get my haircut at simcox and fink the reason that i loved to go to simcox and fink for my haircut was because they were next to the farm store where i could go look at the things at the farm store where i could look at the tractors but by the time i was 12 that dream had kind of faded away I went through a bunch of different phases where I wanted to be a park ranger, but I didn't want to be any kind of park ranger. I wanted to be the park ranger that lived in a cabin in the woods by himself. Then I wanted to be a rock star, which seemed like the best idea, but there were lots of things wrong with that idea, mostly my skill and talent. You know, a little bit later, I met my wife and, and I got a job that I really loved. I became a youth pastor and uh, I'm still in ministry now. Between the time of starting in ministry, becoming a youth pastor, there was another phase where you know I was pretty close to becoming a professional bass fisherman and by pretty close I mean not really close at all but it would have been really cool if I was a professional bass fisherman we're gonna walk back up towards the truck right now I've got the battery charging 4430 hooked up to the red truck the bass fishing thing would have been really cool but again I was missing the same thing that I was missing when it came to being a rock star the skills let's recap the farming thing kind of died away when I was 12 the park ranger thing kind of died away when I was I don't know, 15 or 16. I did become a youth pastor like I wanted to become a youth pastor and that thing was great. Then the bass fishing thing came in, it didn't happen. One thing that might be obvious is I am a dreamer. I like to dream big dreams and think about big amazing things like being a rock star or being a professional bass fisherman. The farm is kind of like that but not really because we're doing it right now about 12 to 14 years ago we talked about getting some life insurance and one of the requirements of the life insurance was to have just a simple blood work physical done so the nurse came to our house drew some blood did all the tests and they came back and said hey your cholesterol is high like really high you should probably get that taken care of because you don't want to be on medicine your entire life. After finding out about my high cholesterol, my wife did a little research knowing that I probably wasn't going to go on an all vegetable diet to lower my cholesterol. And she started reading about grass fed beef. This was my in. I said to myself, self, why buy grass fed beef when I could raise my own grass fed beef? When I said that to myself, we were living on a half acre lot in town of a house that we didn't even own. It was a parsonage for the church that I was working at. So where I thought I was going to put those cows, I don't really know. I started to formulate a plan though, or I probably should say about 30 plans is what I started to formulate. How we could farm. I started thinking about, you know, places I could farm. Well, my family farm where we did the tractor shopping, that place existed. Maybe that would be an option. And so I started having a conversation with my uncle. My dad's farm existed at that time. He lived about an hour and 15 minutes south of me and he had a couple hundred acres, so that was a possibility. Or there was always the possibility of buying our own place. I didn't really know how it was all gonna happen, but I did know this. Just like I wanted to be a farmer when I was 10 or be a park ranger when I was 14 or a rock star when I was 18 or a professional bass fisherman when I was 24, I knew that I wanted to make it happen. And so I did what I did on all of those things whether it was playing with toy tractors or buying fishing lures, I dug in deep and I started reading book after book after book 
about starting your own farm. All of that research gave me a ton of great ideas, but I said, I'm gonna raise grass-fed beef, and I decided I'm gonna raise Dexter cattle, and I decided those are gonna be the centerpiece of my farm, which didn't even exist at this time, but I wanted to start buying cows. So, that's what I did. Just like I bought fishing lures, just like I bought toy tractors, I bought cows. And I bought quite a few Dexter cows, and I put them all on my dad's farm, over an hour away from where I was living at the time, with no plans of under or understanding of how I was going to have my own place to put those cows. Newsflash, it doesn't work out very well to try to farm at a place where you don't live and where you live actually quite a ways from. But it worked out sort of. We had a few cows and it caused us to really start to look for a farm and decide what we were gonna do. That's how we ended up here at Crooked Gap Farm, which when we found it was 40 acres of nothing but ant hills and tall prairie grasses. By this time, I had become the ultimate romantic farmer. By that, I mean like in my mind, I was the greatest farmer in the world and we were gonna come and build a farm out of nothing and it was gonna be amazing and beautiful and people would come just like in Field of Dreams. It would be incredible. The reality was, man, was there a huge learning curve not only in building a house and figuring out what to do with that, but in figuring out anything about farming. I gotta be completely honest, by this time when we had the farm and we were building the house and we were starting to move here, I wasn't really farming because I wanted to lower my cholesterol anymore. I mean, sure that was there in the back of my mind and I wrote about it on the blog and I talked to people about it, but really I was farming because like this was my rock star dream, to be a farmer. Now with hindsight being 2028 20, and all of that good stuff, I kind of look back on it and I wonder to myself, was I making the right decision? Now, I'm not doubting whether or not I should farm, but I'm really doubting how I went about it. I know looking back now that I should have done it a lot of different ways. There are so many hard lessons learned that we had on this farm by not having things ready, by not understanding what we were doing, and by we, I mean me. My wife was along for the ride, but she was way smarter, way more patient, way better at all of this than I was. But I still really wanted to farm, and now we had a farm. It was hard though, and by hard, I mean it's still hard. I don't have much figured out yet. I, I spend a lot of time spinning my wheels so you have a farm you have the cows now what well I just kept adding things I added pigs and I added chickens I added sheep and I just kept getting more cows and I kept adding and adding and adding and things were a little out of control because it's one thing to buy a tackle box full of crankbaits and spinner baits and Ned rigs and think you're gonna be the next Jimmy Houston does anybody even know who Jimmy Houston is to think you're going to be the next Kevin Van Dam it's a totally different thing to buy a bunch of cows and buy a bunch of pigs and buy a bunch of land 40 acres in our case and think I'm going to be a farmer this farm, it was taking on a life of its own, and it's been a struggle, to be completely honest. Now, don't get me wrong, we've improved at a lot of things over the past 12 years of having Crooked Gap Farm. We do a better job with animal husbandry now. We do a better job, a lot better job with marketing these days, and, and we've even made some steps, small steps, but we're making some steps, and by we, again, I mean me, making some steps into the farm life, family life balance but it is still a process, a process of understanding and figuring out and trying to do the best that we can to build the farm that we're building. I think the question then is the same question I asked at the beginning. Why do we have a farm? And in a lot of ways, we probably have a farm because I wanted to be a farmer when I was a kid, and then I wanted to be a park ranger, and then I wanted to be a rock star, and then I wanted to be a professional bass fisherman, and maybe I still want to be a rock star a little, just, just a little bit. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that this is a business. Now, it's not a business that I always do a good job of running as a business. It's something that I've been working on, trying to improve on, trying to understand and wrap my mind around. But in the end, it is a business. We see this farm as a business and as a part of our life. I think part of the reason that we have a farm just comes down to the fact that I'm a dreamer. 
And I think that that's something that is almost necessary when you're a farmer because I've said it a lot, not on video, but on my blog and talking to other people that farming is not just a set of skills that you learn and tasks that you repeat. Farming is an art. If you've ever watched a really experienced farmer stack a hay rack of hay, you know it's an art. Or if you've ever seen them go around the field mowing and planting, or even better yet, cultivating corn, you know it's an art. And I've always been drawn to the art of farming. So if that's why we have a farm, then what is the plan for the farm in the future? And I think the plan for the farm in the future is that I want to continue to grow. Not necessarily more land, although every farmer might say at some point that they want more land, but I want to continue to grow to do a better job, to be more sustainable emotionally and physically, spiritually, financially, ecologically. I want to continue to grow in the amount of people that we're able to serve with our farm, providing great meat for uh, couples and families and individuals. And I want to continue to grow in education. One of my favorite things to do is to share with people what I am passionate about. And I love to share my experiences in it. And so that's where the farm is going. We're still 40 acres. We're still small. We, we've moved away from those cows being the centerpiece, but I'm excited about the future of the farm. Do you see that tree right there? That is the biggest tree in our yard. And I love that tree because it's an example of growth. And I think that's kind of what it is. I still call myself the beginning farmer, even though we are 12 years in, because in a lot of ways, I still feel like a beginner. In the same way that that tree probably still feels like a beginner, that tree is gonna get huge at some point. But I am thankful for all the lessons that I've learned along the way. I'm thankful for all the people, including and especially my family that have supported me along the way. And I hope you enjoy uh, seeing a little bit about what life is like as a beginning farmer on Crooked Gap Farm. Why do we have a farm? Well, that seems like a pretty cool reason to have a farm too. I'm just saying.